Hello, welcome back. Um, this is James Sarah from UX Shape. Um, today I'm going to be talking about um, how you can solve problems as a UX designer. Um, one of the problems you will often face is uh, you'll be presented with some kind of a scenario and you're expected to create a design concept or a prototype or a wireframe so you can show to your stakeholders or your user, your client who has given you this problem to solve. And most of the time, these problems are really very short. They're gonna give you maybe a short statement, or perhaps you're going for an interview and you want to really understand how to solve a problem in the context of um, UX design and how you can probably understand what the client wants. Sometimes also you end up having to work with clients who give you just only very small information. They don't give you a lot of information at all. And you get that because uh, you'll be very surprised that some clients will just give you maybe one or two lines of their problem and that's it. But I just kind of make up this scenario just for the purpose of learning. And the problem here and what we're going to solve today, it's uh, about a care service company. Uh, as you can see, I'll just read it out. A care service company has asked you to develop a system to manage their forms. Currently, the company uses Microsoft Word document to keep information about clients. So in this aspect, you know what the company does is that they've got various clients and they use Microsoft Word to manage their form. So if they need information about a client, they, they use a form that is designed in Microsoft Word. These forms are saved in the folder on the company network computer. The forms can be accessed by each department. The department are responsible for managing different clients, known as service users. So as you if you know if you work within this sector, you will know that clients are sometimes referred to as the service user because you use a, a particular service. And uh, what this section is saying is that the forms are currently being saved on the network computer. So this company is a big company and different service under this large company are connected to their network computer so they can access various forms also in the problem statement it says uh, in the document folder each client has their own named folder and this folder holds various forms to be completed by support staff as required by regulatory bodies. And if you work within the care sector, you know that um, the regulatory bodies are sometimes the commissioners, um, the CQC, which is well known. Uh, and you have a mandatory um, obligation to provide some information about the service you give to your client. So now the company is asking you um, as a UX designer to come out with a possible solution whereby these forms can be managed easily because we all know the pain in managing Microsoft Word document. Microsoft Word document are very, very difficult to manage, especially when you, when you design these forms, it's very hard to update them, very difficult, and you have to redesign. And sometimes it's not always good as well because it takes time to fill this form. And also, the process in which you fill this form, you have to go to, you know, to the folder and open the form. Then what you do is to save as and complete the form, save it. And then if you want to email the form, you have to open your email. Then you need, then you need to send it as an attachment. And that is just complicating the whole process. So they've asked you to provide a solution whereby they can manage their forms easily. And that is what this um, video tutorial is all about. It's about solving a problem now and solving it for the client. Also, one of the challenge that um, is faced within this sector that you will have to think about yourself because when you speak to the user, obviously you don't expect them to give you every problem like 10 pages. This is just one page and that's it. So you have to make some assumption about the type of users that work within this company and within the sector and we know many of them are of older age group and telling them to use Microsoft Word it's just going to complicate issues so they've been you've been taxed to provide a solution whereby they can manage their forms easily as the previous way is uh, very 
challenging and difficult to manage and these forms can grow large microsoft work document can get corrupt so the information can be lost all those challenges is what you face and some of the problems that they face is uh have been listed here although i just make an assumption just to reduce so that the problem statement will not be too long and of course your client who has asked you to develop a system will not tell you 20 problem they face you will have to make some assumption and you have to talk to them and ask their user the problem they face and then you come up with a possible solution and that is how you solve a problem now some of the problem they face is um, different forms are created which lead to different information so i can you know they can create one form today and then they lose that form and then they end up creating another form whereby they will have to maybe make changes and then they get hold of the previous form so you just have different forms all over the place and you don't even know which one is which anymore updating this form also is going to prove very difficult because you know one person is assessing this form and they are just trying to make information change information about this thing which is like you will have to type this information in and format them for the font size and every, it's just going to be very difficult to manage because it's a Microsoft Word document. And even if you look at the fillable PDF document, that's where it's still very difficult. So a lot of organizations now are trying to move into the direction of a web form solution. Now, the user are supposed to have are now skilled enough to use Microsoft Word document format which is a pain as well it's more easy for you to actually use a web form and uh, create and fill out a form submit a form or save the form which can be easily retrieved and uh, you can update the form whenever you want you can print the form you can export it to pdf you can do so many things that you wouldn't be able to do uh, on a microsoft word Although you can do some of them, but it will be very difficult and you will have to have at least basic knowledge of how to use Microsoft Word. And some of the users don't know how to use Microsoft Word, so it's very difficult. Also, the problem they face will be the inconsistency of the layout of the form. And this varies from how each user completes this form, which can uh, make the form go bigger, smaller, you know, everything just look disorganized. So as a UX designer, you've been asked to provide a solution whereby they can manage their forms appropriately so that each of these clients have these forms and you can easily update them and maintain them and you can easily share them with different um, people. So um, the first step you need to realize in solving a problem is that you 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 don't really jump into um creating prototype or wireframe first you need to understand okay this is their problem and uh, what is the main problem they face they've list four and you need to okay well that is the four problem they face and that's how we, this is how we're going to solve this problem so you need to understand the user and also where and how you're going to pro provide a solution. So I've come up with a possible solution whereby you can easily adapt to any kind of organization that rely heavily on Microsoft Word document. And many organizations still do ridiculously that anyway. So I will now open uh, ActuRP. Then the solution that I've come up here, it's um, a web form management system. It can be named anything. It can be just named web form or anything you want to name it. You don't have to go by this name at all. But for the purpose of um, learning and for this purpose of the tutorial, I would just name this a web form. So I've created a an home page for this form on actual. And uh, one of the very first thing I thought about is okay security securing these forms is important on the Microsoft Word version well you can password a, a, a Microsoft Word document but come on you're gonna be passwording over 2000 over 300 versions of document it's just gonna be ridiculous um, and then you have to password maybe the folders as well which is just gonna be a pain so that is why a web-based solution 
is a um, is an ideal solution to this problem that this company face so i've created an own page and i've created a login page as well and i've created a main application page and i've created a list of forms page and then the form page um then let us load this form i've already loaded let's just open it in chrome yep if you look at the page now this is the application that i've proposed as a ux designer and also you must have a degree of analyzing requirements you don't just start creating boxes and start uh, you know giving them unnecessary um names you have to really understand what's your problem your client face and how you're going to provide them a better solution so this is my idea another person can interpret the problem that i've just shown which his days another designer can solve this problem in a different way but at the end of the day we'll still kind of come up with a similar kind of possible solution so let's go back to chrome now i've created a a landing page which is going to be assessed by the company also i want to point this application is going to be assessed only by the organizational staff it is not a form that is designed it is not a system that is designed to be assessed by external body so our focus here right now it's not really to say oh um this form need to be very you know well designed look and feel need to be spotless and all those things it is good to understand that okay everything needs to be shiny and whatever but the most important thing is that you want to really deliver that value what's your client which is the company needs from you as a designer what they've asked you to do you need to solve their problem first before you can talk about how to be creative in whatever you want to do so i've created this landing page which it is a an home page and it says web form management system very simple so a staff that works within the organization comes into the system when they want to complete a particular form for a client which is known somewhere here as a service user as we've seen in the um, problem statement now this form this page gives an overview of what the system is all about what they are supposed to do and what they are not supposed to do and what the system is designed for especially those three things are what this page is all about and we have a login screen here so if i click on the login screen it takes us to the login page now you understand one thing as a designer you have to be consistent in your design as well so there's familiarity in every page and i've made it very simple uh, just two colors no more than that and make it very informative you only give the user what they want now there is a difference between assessing your email account or assessing other forms of system whereby you have to use a username and password and one of the ways i've analyzed this problem is to identify okay who are the users of this system who are going to use this system we know that the support staff in the problem statement which is here are the ones that are going to use this system the support staff will use the system to complete you know the various form these are the user in bold here they are the user but these users are not just using it for their own purposes they are using it on behalf of the company and on behalf of the department they work in and that is why logging in i've made it to be a drop down box and make it a department so that the idea is you work for this company and you are in a department or you are posted to work in another branch and this branch has clients that they manage which is in the problem statement and each of these departments 
hold different staff members as well. So what I've created here is to have a department drop down list whereby you can um, select from there. So if you come in as a, you know, as a staff member and you log in, you click login from the home page, you click login. The first thing you need to do is to select your department. When you select your department and you enter the password. Now this password is going to be the password for either the department or the password for yourself. But I will make an assumption and I will say this should be the password for the department so that you don't have to let everybody have different passwords. It's just going to complicate issue. This is an internal system and it's just to complete the form, retrieve and manage it. So, um, the department have a password and everybody that works in that department know the password. So you log in, you select your department and you enter the department password and you log in. Once you are logging, you are in that department and we have um, a display here, the department name and the department location. So at least as a user, when you, when you want to complete a form for a client, you know, okay, you are in the right department and you know everything is correct and you have the current date as well. So you know that, okay, you, you're completing. And I've made it very simple. You have the logo at this corner here and then you have the, the settings at this corner here, which is gonna be for some information. And I'm still gonna talk about this. Now, what I've done here is to create a simple page whereby you can easily search for the client. Now, some some department might hold several clients in hundreds. Some department can hold maybe just only five clients or 10 clients or four clients or three clients. Some department may not even have any client or some department can have 200. So the availability for the support staff who are completing a form, at least they should be able to search should in case they work in the department whereby they have lots of clients and you can just scroll you know you can just scroll through each of the page and try to find out which service users or which client you want to complete a particular form for so that's why i've provided a simple search whereby as you type the information down here will change as you type values so you can either search with the first name or last name or both. And it is vital that you provide this information because the people using this system are not technically skilled. So you don't just assume that they're gonna say, okay, let me search with the username or the password. So you have to actually show them, give them a, you know, a text description of what they can search and how they can use this search form better. Now, the next thing is once they search, you want to provide an information whereby, okay, you found 150 service users in this service, and then you want to either sort it by first name or last name so that you can easily narrow it down to whoever you are. Also, you can have other filter option, but at this time it is really not um, important because what you are actually completing is the form and the information you're going to have in your database at the end of the day is going to be maybe just their first name and last name you're not going to have lots of information so there's no point trying to filter with different options two options is okay you can either filter by first name or by surname now when you filter it loads different information and i've kept it simple the design is simple you have the um each of the service user you have the picture here and you have their full name here now one thing that i've come to um realize now that um, before you do all these things right you need to sometimes understand what you are solving right and i will just load um this notepad Firstly, what you need to do before you even start anything at all, designing anything, you need to understand the process is going to take. Okay, how do you think the staff member is going to interact with this product? 
how will they complete a particular form so i will call it um let's go back to the problem statement and go back to another page i will say okay let's say process for no process to complete a new form now this is a process uh this will be um the the steps that each staff member is going to go through to complete a particular form so let's say the form they want to complete is uh, application form application form now what is the process to complete this application form and i've come up with some some process i've come up with first process is um well you, you're going to go to the home page the second process you're going to log in the next stage is you're going to select or click whichever word you want to use select the service user's name then the next thing you're going to do is to select the form to complete and another step will be to fill the form itself and the last step will be to submit the form now submission you can either send by email um, export to PDF or you can print it immediately when you complete the the product now what's this is the process that you take I've made it six steps now if you are to go by the problem that they have whereby this thing is so is saved in a in a network folder you realize that you first of all assess the the network drive and after you've you've accessed the network drive then you you locate the department folder once you've located the department folder then you locate the um let's try and think about how the previous statement um the previous process to complete a form work uh, previous process to complete a new form let's call it application form as well now the previous statement might be um, to first of all uh, assess network drive locate network folder uh, locate department folder three locate the service user folder or locate the form then open the form in MS Word fill out the form save the form on the network drive In the department folder on the network drive um, open email account create new email attach file to email attach file to email um, send so you can see now that the previous process 
to complete a form it's it, it's ridiculously long it's 11 steps and it could be more than depending on whoever is accessing this network drive they might not be familiar with the folder structure of the system and this just complicate this accessibility of this form even further and for your average staff who has limited uh, basic computer skills uh, you don't want to you don't want them to go through this process at all so i've come up with six steps and you are done and that's it you don't need to do anything other than these six steps and that's the first thing you do when you are solving a problem you analyze the requirements you understand the user you look at the previous process that they use and you know how to reduce you're not going to eliminate anything because it's not going to be possible for you to just say, okay, everybody can just read their form to the screen. Of course, it's possible for you to read information to the computer screen and then the computer types it automatically. But you are dealing with more complex um, scenario here. So you need to really understand the problem. And from a UX design point of view, I am not talking about somebody now who is doing Photoshop or who is doing... Um, graphic design who just gonna be drawing boxes and everything you have to understand and you need to have some external core uh, business analysis skills as well to understand this problem so you can provide a solution to that problem now let's go back to our screen and for now i will just log out now what i'm gonna do i'm going to reduce the screen and I'm gonna put the problem beside it as well so that we can see what we are dealing with here I'm gonna reduce this a little bit yeah so we can see it properly now we have the problem statement and we have what we are creating if we look at the process that i have identified here i have identified um six steps to complete a new form and i'll just demonstrate how the system can work in what has been created using actual rp7 so first thing you need to log in you're on the home page then you need to log in you select your department and your entire password then you click login you are on the home page the main page of your department you can search and you can select or click on the user that you want to fill a form for it takes you to a page whereby you'll be able to see the forms that need to be created you see the person's name and it gives the user a brief information about what they can do on this form so you know we just have a little text here we say web form please select any form you wish to complete for this service user after completion you can either email them export to pdf or print it so you are giving the user this vital information so at first they they already know what they can do when they complete each of these forms which is very important the second aspect of this page is uh, I've made an option whereby you can select form to complete. Either you can make a new entry, which is select, a, select to complete a new form, or you can click completed forms. Now, managing or preventing duplicated forms in the problem statement, which they say oh, updating each form is very difficult and um, you know different forms have been, have been created, which lead to different information. With this process here with this page that will not be the case because you can actually see that okay i want to create a new form for this particular person i can click create new form or i want to create i want to update the completed forms so any form that have been completed that need updating i just want to work on that form only then you can click on the completed form and the forms are displayed below and 
once you click the form you want to create the title of the form will be here and the form is displayed here once the user complete the forms they want to fill out they can either email it and i've done some things here so when you click on email it loads this model pop up which says email form sent to then you enter the recipient email at whatever whatever you want to do and then you click send or you export a pdf you print or you save the form which gives you this process of saving the form and then it's okay your form is saved and then you click okay and that is it so this is a simple solution and if you look at it i have not used more than the six steps as described here these six steps are what i've just shown you and it's very easy to do so i'm going to maximize the page back so we can have the full page of the screen now this has been created using actual rp and it is really really very good because you can really see that it's very simple not complicated no complication at all and it's direct another thing i want to talk about is the setting section now the setting section is very important in this scenario because obviously people are going to be assessing this form and you want to have some level of security even though it is still going to be used internally within the organization you still need to have some level of security and also how you can prevent unauthorized access so what i've done here is i have this setting page and uh, if i put mouse over i can you know over and change these are just things that, that you do in actual the purpose of this tutorial is not to teach you how to do this mouse hover thing the purpose is to show you how to solve a problem and how uh, and demonstrate to your client a solution that you are proposing for them so now what i've done here is i've created these settings and I've created five menu here. The first menu is had a new service user, which is like adding a client. So to add a client so that um, a support staff member can complete a form for them. Obviously, their information needs to be stored on the system in the database already. And we just need to capture just few. We don't need so many information. If I click on here, it says add new service user which is the first name the last name and you select the department that service user belongs to now you don't necessarily you don't have to have a date of birth country phone number because the purpose of this system is not that so you need to really understand that when you are solving a problem you don't just create forms or because Obviously, this form is going to be saved in a database and you don't want to have information that is totally irrelevant. It could be relevant if the problem says they want all this information captured. But as a designer, sometimes you have to make an assumption to say, you know what, these are the information that are important now that are critical to this system. Other information can come on later. You can have the date of birth because the date of birth can be used to maybe search for them. But obviously, people will not remember people's date of birth so it's better to just put their first name last name and the department you don't need their country their age it's irrelevant so the next thing i've done is to have um, a session whereby you can add a new staff because staff works in the department okay and uh, i'm still going to do a tutorial about um databases creating databases but the, the purpose of this is not to teach you how you know each entities are related to each other so you need to understand that now the next thing i've done is to add new staff and the new staff will be to add their first name their last name select the the, the department that the staff is and the position of the department and that is it you save it it's done you go back of, of course you know it's not supposed to go back to the home page but i've now updated that so i'll just click back here now the next thing we need to do is to create a new department so let's say we have five departments and then we open another branch as the company grows and then we want to 
have another branch and then link some client to that branch we create a new department as well and we have the department name the department location and department phone number um really the department phone number is irrelevant what is more important is the department name and the department location nothing you can add more information here as you wish then we have change department password you can the current password is going to be displayed here the whole the, then you enter the new password and you confirm new password and you update the password easy now changing the password and having access to this menu will only be limited to some particular user and that is what is going to be done at the back end whereby you're going to have privileges who is allowed to see this menu here because somebody changing the department password should be maybe the administrator and somebody adding new department you know somebody adding new staff and somebody adding new service user should be some someone who has the power you know you won't just give this um, access to ordinary staff member to add new service user or add new staff for example or add new department because they might not know that because they don't work at that level of the business so you might have to give these uh, privileges to the manager or senior management so that they can actually add new service user add new staff add new department change department password but what is common for everyone is they will be able to log out regardless so the next thing is for you to now have um, a logout screen and i've created this logout screen in such a way that it's it's a uh, it's more or less, you know, like a pop-up mother boss and it's, it's like a question kind of thing. So it's like, you know, you're about to log out, you know, you're about to sign out from the web form system, log me out or keep me logging. If I click, click, keep me logging, it remains there. If I click it and I click log out, it closes the page and goes back to the home page. Now, one of the assumption that I've done is this system is going to be used internally and I've tried to create it in a way that it is very simple easy to access and also try to make it look as if you are using kind of a desktop application and that is why you have some of this pop-up motor box thing um, so that user can interact with them and of course this can be done you know it can be completed on mobile as well when the form you know will be responsive the web page will be responsive and all that but the purpose of this tutorial is to actually show you how you can take a problem statement like this, analyze the problem statement, and then create a solution like this. I hope you've been able to learn one or two things about understanding problem and uh, analyzing the problem, making some assumptions, and creating a detailed solution. And I would like you to give a comment below if you have any specific thing that you think that this page might be lacking or what you think can improve this system leave it in the comment below as well also this um, application this prototype has been developed using actual rp and you can see these are all the files in actual with all the dynamic and widget thing this is the login this has this was completely done in actual RP, what you are seeing right now, everything. And I've made use of master's dynamic panel to make sure that um, the information you are seeing here is presented well and looks okay. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today and I'll see you around in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.